security on and off ship should always be a concern. In today's world, you should be suspicious of anyone or anything. Everyone should be on their guard, even with a simple thing like being asked to take a package, no matter how innocent it may appear. But what do you do when a serious security problem arises? And how do you deal with these issues with the least possible risk to everyone? Improve your awareness of security matters on board your ship. Watching this video will help you to understand the role of the ship security officer, appreciate the importance of being alert, know the correct procedures in the event of a threat, use this knowledge on board your own ship. In all, it will help you to understand shipboard security. Shipping is vital to the world economy. It is an effective, efficient and flexible form of transport, whether it's carrying cargo or people. But we also have to be realistic. Shipping today can face many threats, and any of these could affect you, your colleagues and your ship. The events of uh, September 11th certainly did uh, cross our minds with regard to maritime, the whole shipping community. What we want to do is improve security, preserve mobility, so that we can preserve our vulnerable maritime commerce for years to come. A lot of people were thinking that the ship industry was exempted from any terrorist attack, and it was not at all the same situation if you compare, for instance, with uh, air transport. At the same time, I must say that uh, the European Union was already thinking about different measures and uh, shipping security. We have found through a seaport security commission in our country in the United States that our ports are very vulnerable and we all recognize just how valuable shipping is to not only us in the United States but to all our trading partners around the world. The IMO this time has produced mandatory legislation which is going to be applied not only to passenger ships but to all ships over 500 tons in international waters and the ports which deal with them. So it is a, a seismic change in responsibility for ships and ports. We realized, quickly realized in the marine industry that we were very vulnerable and exposed to threats from terrorist organizations because of the nature of the trade in which we engage and the measures which we immediately took were an enhanced state of vigilance on ships and in particular areas. The threats that pop out to me are using the vessel as a weapon. For one instance it can be used to be a USS Cole type of a vehicle, to, uh, to be a rogue vessel that could be run into another vessel, a naval vessel or a nuclear facility or a bridge abutment. Uh, we have to be mindful of the vessel as a weapon uh, just by itself. Some of the vessels carry cargoes that might be attractive to be used as weapons if they, their cargo were detonated. Just think of the uh, consequences of detonating one of those in a downtown area in a major port in the United States. Vessels could be used to generate income for terrorist organizations, either through the drug business, by which many of them uh, earn their income, uh, by or just by what might be look like legitimate business but in fact isn't uh, moving explosives or moving people to different parts of the world for their terrorist business. I think the threat is uh, is ever present and uh, for us not to do something to mitigate that threat would be unconscionable.
Someone on board your ship has been nominated as the ship security officer, with responsibility for implementing the ship security plan. The ship security officer and all crew members must follow specific industry rules and regulations. These are set out in the ISPS code, which has been agreed at the IMO under an amendment to the SOLAS Convention. Yes. OK, right, I'll get back to you as soon as we've completed the search. Piracy, stowaways. So every ship must have a ship security plan, which must be understood and followed by every member of the crew. So, amongst other things, the ship security officer is responsible for assessing threats and taking appropriate precautions, organizing and monitoring routine measures and regular security inspections, developing contingency plans, coordinating duties with the crew, communicating and liaising with the shore. We still do need to identify our stevedores, of course, to prevent them remaining... When the ship security team which would include myself and the heads of the department, perceive that there is a risk prior to entering an area and we decide on the measures which we are going to take, the security officer would see that these are actually carried out. He would give specific instructions to the crew as to what measures were to be taken, if these were to be physical protection measures or just lectures concerning the extra state of vigilance or that they should be aware of, of any perceived threat. Take a detailed look at your ship. If you were going to attack it, where do you think it would be easiest? Discuss this with the ship security officer. Thinking about potential threats, particularly from terrorists, will help you to be more vigilant about security matters. A major part of the ship security officer's role is to regulate the access to the ship, ensuring that lighting, communication and alarm systems are satisfactory, and adjusting surveillance and monitoring as necessary. Radar surveillance on low ranges to detect small craft coming in close to the ship, possibly use our searchlights to scan water areas, consider using infrared binoculars which our ships do carry and is an additional method of detecting uh, people trying to gain illegal access to the ship. Attacks on shipping have increased over the last 10 years, both at sea and in port. Many robbers are petty criminals, but organised crime is also a threat. The most popular waters for piracy are around Asia, Africa and South America. Small ships and slow steaming ships with low freeboard are especially vulnerable. Although container ships steaming at full speed have also been boarded. It's vital to control visitors' access to the ship. One way to prevent unauthorized access while in port is to keep gangways or stern ramps hoisted when not in use. If possible, crew members should be assigned to gangway watch and provided with a system for keeping a tally of all those allowed on board, such as stevedores. A closed circuit TV system trained on the gangway is another option for monitoring access. They are also ideal in the vulnerable and high security areas of the ship where access needs to be controlled. There are special arrangements in place for foreign crews visiting the United States and you should check with your company superintendent or stateside agent for the latest information. Seafarers judged to be a security risk may be fingerprinted and checked against known criminals and terrorists. It's vital to bear in mind that all visitors must identify themselves 
even those in suits, as terrorists don't always wear balaclavas and carry Kalashnikovs. In one recent incident, a smart gang who spoke perfect English went on board several ships, claiming to be on owner's business. They then robbed the ships using violence. Simply questioning them at the point of access and checking for weapons could have deterred them. What we think in the European Commission is that we must now have the culture of fighting uh, the terrorism and thinking more about security, not only at national, regional level or ports level, but also at the European level and uh, namely also at the world level. Uh, that's why we favour any multilateral approach developed in the International Maritime Organization. The ship security plan should ensure that you know precisely what to do when a security emergency arises. The plan contains measures to counter threats such as terrorism, piracy, stowaways and suspect packages or devices. If stowaways are found after sailing, the police, port authorities and the P&I club must be informed, as well as the company security officer. If there's more than one, they should be separated and taken to secure quarters with, if possible, two crew members. Keep sight of them at all times, even when they go to the toilet. Search the area for any belongings or documents. You can search their clothes, but do not use force. Take an inventory of anything you find and seal the items in a plastic bag. Each stowaway should be interviewed separately by the master and, ideally, photographed. Stowaways have basic rights, and these are acknowledged by the IMO and the United Nations. These include food and water, a life jacket and reasonable accommodation. In the event of an attack, it may prove difficult, but try to keep calm. If possible, and there's no danger, transmit a security alert. Don't resist. Do exactly as they say. Understand that the more rapport you have with the terrorists, the less likely you or any others will come to harm. If you find a suspicious device, inform the ship security officer of its location. Don't move the device away from people move people away from the device and cordon off the area. If a device is found while you're sailing, follow the same procedure and activate your blast route planning. Bridge. Yeah, I've located a suspicious package in the oil skin lottery. Activate the alert yes. button if one is fitted to your vessel. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cordon it off. Will do. Make sure that firefighting equipment is ready for use. If a bomb explodes without warning on or near the ship, the master should ensure watertight integrity and stability. Arrange first aid if necessary. Take firefighting precautions and inform the company, as well as local port authorities, making distress calls. If the ship is in port, inquiries from the press or next of kin will need to be handled. Depending on the perceived level of threat, we would possibly consider taking some physical, additional physical protection areas, i.e. possibly fitting barbed wire 
to some of the companionways which gain access to the bridge to slow down or impede the uh, access of terrorists to the bridge area. The ship security officer should liaise very closely with their company security officer and when entering port with the port security officer. They may also have to liaise with an enforcement agency. The company security officer clearly has to ensure that all the procedures and systems are in place to protect the fleet. That will start with uh, doing scenario planning and risk assessment of what the threats to the company may be. And then, as with any other emergency planning, ensuring that all the procedures to deal with those threats are in place through to regular exercising and testing of the arrangements. The other role of the company security officer, which can't really be undertaken by the ship security officer, is to look at security in ports where the ships trade, because clearly the security of a port is as important to the security of the vessels berthing there as the security on board the vessels themselves. There has to be a system for checking what he's bringing or what they're loading, and there has to be a system of denial to restricted areas. If that is organised properly, it need not be expensive, and it need not be too time-consuming. As with every ship, each port and terminal should have its own security precautions in place. At specialised ports, like oil, gas and chemical terminals, these measures may be very sophisticated. Basic security precautions are similar to those on board vessels. These include means of controlling access, such as barriers and perimeter fencing, security patrols, lighting and alarm systems, methods for identifying and searching people, vehicles and baggage. The ship security officer must be familiar with the port security requirements and know what is expected, both quayside and waterside. However, good port security is no substitute for effective shipboard controls. Security has to be thought about throughout the journey, from loading cargo to berthing in port at your destination. The ship's officers and crew should all know the duties that have been allocated to them in the ship security plan. This plan also helps to define, implement, monitor and improve procedures. Make sure you are completely familiar with the layout of the ship, including access points, accommodation spaces, safe areas, emergency and standby equipment, lighting and alarm systems, internal and ship-to-shore communication systems. The hijackers hijack stated that they had explosives and threatened to blow up themselves and the hostages. Political events and situations are beyond the control of a shipping company and these situations can change rapidly altering the level of threat during a voyage. The impact of such terrorist attacks is so big in terms not only of money but also of human life and firstly seafarers that uh, it's better to try and protect ourselves rather than to just to discover the results of uh, the lack of security. Okay, we're shortly coming into an open berth, and we've uh, reason to believe that uh, there's an increased threat to the ship. So we're going to up the security from black to... Amber. The ISPS code so specifies three levels of security to cope with different levels of perceived threat. The level to be applied will be influenced by factors such as is there any political turmoil or armed conflict? Have other ships been attacked? Are there many refugees in the area? Have stowaways or drug smuggling been a regular problem? 
Is the ship carrying valuable or hazardous cargo? What matters is knowing what action to take when threat levels are increasing. Security level one. This is the normal level, with minimum appropriate security measures being maintained at all times. Access on and off the vessel controlled, with all persons identified, and the ship's crew and passengers not allowed to disembark without authority. Access to sensitive areas of the vessel limited. The handling of cargo and stores witnessed. Spot checks on access point controls. Regular security patrols. The ship security officer to contact the port security officer at each port of call. Security level two. This is a heightened level which requires additional protective measures for a time because there is more risk of incident. Check all deliveries closely, be it cargo or stores. Particular grounds for suspicion may require that a container is opened and the contents inspected. Visitors may be searched and escorted. Carry out random bomb searches. In port, carry out hull inspections from quay and waterside. The crew to be extra vigilant and increase the frequency of patrols. Patrols to be stepped up, especially in port. Access of all visitors to be strictly controlled, especially to the bridge and engine room. Rig overside lighting. Security level three is termed exceptional. This requires further security measures for a limited time when an incident is probable or imminent. All spaces, including off-duty crew lockers, to be searched. All stores and deliveries checked prior to acceptance. Okay, gentlemen. The ship now is approaching a piratical waters. As you know, Crew briefed on seriousness of the situation and requirement for vigilance. Patrols of the vessel to be intensified if possible. Possibly suspending embarkation and disembarkation, halting cargo operations and the delivery of stores. At security level three, the port state control authorities may take control of the situation. The measures applying to your vessel for the three different levels of security are set out in the ship security plan. They are there for your protection and they can help deter those with criminal intent. It is essential that details of the plan itself are restricted to those who need to know. Control the flow of information and restrict knowledge of the cargo to as few people as possible. Routine defensive measures should include lock internal and external hatches, close hawse pipe covers. If time allows, open and inspect unsealed containers, especially those with soft tops. Report any suspicious activity to the ship security officer. Increasing uh, the, the level of surveillance, vigilance during the hours of darkness by po posting additional lookouts and having more frequent surveillance of radar or continuous surveillance of radar on, on low ranges at night to detect the approach of small craft to the vessel during the hours of darkness. In areas of high risk of piracy it may be advisable to anchor offshore during the day or overnight or to sail continuously near the port. 
A key measure against both stowaways and terrorists intent on sabotage is thorough searches of the ship prior to sailing. These may be time-consuming, but in high-risk ports they can be very effective in safeguarding your vessel. These should be documented so that those searching a specific area know precisely where and what to look for. This information can be put on a checklist issued to the searchers. Remember that searches aren't over until they're over. Don't abandon a search once stowaways or suspicious items have been discovered. There could be more. If we don't make change, you know, we'll leave ourselves much too vulnerable to our investment in this business. And uh, I respect the important role that all of these identified people, such as ship security officers, play. And I, I hope that they will take that to heart, will accept uh, the responsibilities, uh, will participate in the developments of the plan and the development of the assessment of their vessels and the ports in which they serve and that they will take on the responsibility of training their shipmates and at least making them aware of some of the things that will help improve security and uh, make our shipping commerce world that much less vulnerable to intervention by terrorists. Right, this is the most important access point on the ship, the gangway. Whoever is Security training is important to ensure that everyone knows their role in both routine and emergency procedures, so that the plan is effective. Drills should be carried out every three months, as specified in the ISPS code, or more frequently where necessary. Preparation is important. Taking part in drills will raise awareness and encourage the taking of responsibility. There are two types of drill with which you should be familiar. Searches for stowaways and suspect devices and boarding attacks by criminals. The notes from the last drill should be reviewed so as to identify what went well but also what needs to be worked on. A member of the crew could play the part of a stowaway. But the ship's security officer must know where they intend to hide themselves. Safety comes first. The crew taking part in a drill should clearly understand its purpose. They should know the potential dangers involved and the safety precautions they should take. After the drill, those who took part should be able to say how they thought it went. Like all, all drills on the ship, it trains the crew how to react in a particular emergency. With most threats from terrorism or piracy, the actual attack, if it's detected early enough, enough by the vigilance of the crew on the ship, can be limited or even completely negated to force the terrorists to give up because they've been seen. Secrecy is, is the most important weapon from them, the element of surprise. If that's foiled by the crew being vigilant, we can escape their attentions and perhaps not be the victim of their attack. Now this needs to be a global solution because it not only affected our country, it affected all of our trading partners. And in fact, nationals from about 90 countries died that day. Today, security in our everyday lives is becoming ever more important, and security at sea is no different. Being alert at all times is an important part of what you can do to improve shipboard security. More information can be found in the training course that accompanies this video.